All right, thanks for watching. And are you ready to evaluate the following monster integral? Namely, the integral from zero to one of e of arc sine of x times arc cosine plus e of arc cosine times arc sine of x dx. And you'll see it's not as bad as you might think. So for this first integral, let's use a u sub. So let t be arc sine of x. In other words, x is sine of t. Then on the one hand, dx is cosine of t dt. And also, what is arc cosine of x? Well, it's just pi over 2 minus arc sine of x. Because in a right triangle, the two non 90 degree angles, they add to 90 degrees. So in other words, co arc cosine of x becomes pi over 2 minus t. And finally, if x goes between 0 and 1, t goes, be be goes between arc sine of 0 to arc sine of 1, so from 0 to pi over 2. That'll transform our first integral. Now, for the second integral, we'll use t is our cosine of x. So x is cosine of t. And then dx is minus sine of t, dt. Arc sine of x, similar, it's pi over 2 minus t. And this time, t ranges from arc cosine of 0 to arc cosine of 1. So from pi over 2 to 0. And in fact, if you compare both sides, you get something very similar, except the only difference is instead of cosine, for the second integral we have sine, and this goes the wrong way, but it cancels out with the minus. So after all those u subs, what you end up getting is the following. So abracadabra. Alakazam. So after some whoosh substitutions, you end up getting the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the t times pi over 2 minus t cosine of t plus the same thing but with sine of t. And you will see we will now evaluate both integrals using the same technique. So we will kill literally two birds with one stone by using complex exponentials. So in fact, instead of evaluating the stuff with cosine and sine, let's replace it with e to the it, which is very nice because it combines with this e to the t. So what we end up getting is integral from zero to pi over two, e to the one plus i t times pi over two minus t dt. And now we can just use integration by parts. So this becomes e to the 1 plus i t over 1 plus i times pi over 2 minus t from 0 to pi over 2. And then minus integral from 0 to pi over 2 e to the 1 plus i t over 1 plus i and then minus 1 because of that derivative. Dt. And then let's evaluate this. So in other words, at pi over 2, this becomes 0. So we have minus e of 0, so 1 over 1 plus i, times pi over 2. So here, minus minus becomes plus. And then to evaluate this antiderivative, we divide by 1 plus i again. So e to the 1 plus i t 
over 1 plus i squared, and that's from 0 to pi over 2. And then we can simplify all of this a little bit. So what we have so far is this 1 over 1 plus i times pi over 2. The other one, you factor out 1 over 1 plus i squared and evaluate the resulting points at pi over 2 and 1. And let's clean this up by having no more i's on the denominator. Again, i don't like to be on the bottom, like black pen, red pen says. So what we have, let's multiply this by 1 minus i. So 1 over 1 plus i, 1 minus i, 1 minus i, and pi over 2. This one you can just expand out. So 1 over 1 plus 2i plus i squared, which is minus 1. This becomes e to the pi over 2, and then e i pi over 2, and then minus 1. And then what we have is minus 1 minus i, so a squared plus b squared, so 1 minus i squared, so 2, and then pi over 2. And then this we have 1 over 2i, which again, let's multiply top and bottom by minus i. And we have e to the pi over 2 times i minus 1. And then, uh, we're almost done with this. So now we have minus pi over 4 and then minus minus plus and then i. So plus i pi over 4. And here we can also simplify. So minus i squared is 1. So we have minus i over 2 and then e pi over 2i minus 1. And I believe what you end up getting is minus pi over 4 plus i pi over 4. And then uh, minus i squared is plus, so plus e pi over 2 over 2, and then plus i over 2. So in the end, we have one half e to the pi over 2 minus pi over 4 plus i pi over 4 plus 1 half, or maybe 1 half plus pi over 4. So that's the result of the complex integral. And now let's see how we can uh, re evaluate the real integral in the end. So just as a reminder, what did we find? We found that the integral from 0 to pi over 2, and then pi over 2 minus t, e to the t, e to the i t, dt, we found that this is um, e to the pi over 2 over 2 minus pi over 4 plus i pi over 4 plus 1 half. But now the cool thing is you can write e to the i t as cosine of t plus i sine of t and compare real and imaginary parts to get the same versions for cosine and sine. So in the end, you get 0 pi over 2, pi over 2 minus t, e to the t, cosine of t dt is the real part. So e to the pi over 2 over 2 minus pi over 4. Same thing for sine. So pi over 2 minus t e to the t sine of t dt. Now it's pi over 4 plus 1 half. And then what is our answer? So coming back to our original question, well, all we had 
have to do now is add up the integrals because I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, that was our first integral. That was our second one. So the answer is literally the sum of the two. So e of pi over 2 over 2 minus pi over 4 plus pi over 4 plus 1 half. And boom, boom, this cancels out. And in the end, we get e to the pi over 2 plus 1 over 2. Ta-da! This is Mathematic, and I am the great Pi Dini. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.